Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, Chapter 8, The TV Star. Beginning on page 89, a little bit past the middle. Uh, Mr. Vincent pointed to Fudge. Either that kid rides my toddle bike, or I take my account to another advertising agency. It's that simple. My father looked at Mr. Denberg. It's your decision, Warren, Mr. Denberg told my father. I don't want to be the one to tell you what to do. My father picked up Fudge and held him on his lap. Would you like to ride the toddle bike, Fudge? It's just like the one you have at home. Why are you asking him, I said. What does he know about making commercials? My father acted like he'd forgotten I was even around. I'm thinking, Peter, he said. Please be quiet. Well, Hatcher, Mr. Vincent said, what'll it be? This kid of yours, or do I move to another agency? I remembered how my father lost the Juicio account because of Fudge. Now maybe he'd lose this one, too, and I don't think he can afford that. Finally, my father said, all right, George, you can use him on one condition, though. What's that, Hatcher? Mr. Vincent asked. My, the commercial has to be made this afternoon. After today, my son Fudge won't be available. That's fine with me, Hatcher, Mr. Vincent said. Is he going to get paid, I asked my father. I'll worry about that, Peter, my father said. That probably meant yes. He'd be paid and have lots of money in the bank. I'd have nothing, and someday I'd have to borrow from him. No, wait a minute, never. I'll never borrow money from Fudge. I'll starve first. Can I at least watch when you make the commercial, I asked. Certainly, my father said. You can watch the whole thing. I turned to Mr. Denberg. Will Fudge be famous, I asked. No, not famous, but a lot of people will think he looks familiar, Mr. Denberg said. I turned to Mr. Vincent. Do you know he has no top front teeth? That's part of his charm, Mr. Vincent said. And he cut off all his hair two months ago. Well, he looks fine now, Mr. Vincent said. And he can't even talk in long sentences yet, I told everyone in the room. He doesn't have to say a word, Mr. Vincent told me. I couldn't think of any other reason why Mr. Vincent shouldn't use Fudge in his toddle bike commercial. It was settled. Soon Fudge would be a famous television star, and I would be plain old Peter Hatcher. Fourth grade nothing. Let's begin right after lunch, Mr. Denberg said. We should get it filmed in about two hours. While my father and Mr. Denberg worked out all the arrangements, I asked Janet where the men's room was. She walked me to it. I told her thank you and that she didn't have to wait. I'd find my own way back. When I was safely inside, I looked at myself in the mirror. I wish Fudge had never been born, I thought. Everything good always happens to him. If he had to be born, I wish he could be nine or ten like me. Then Mr. Vincent wouldn't want him to be the one to ride the toddle bike in his commercial. Janet sent down to the coffee shop for some sandwiches and drinks. After we ate, we all walked to another section of the agency where the cameras were set up. A make-believe street scene was the background. The toddle bike was shiny red. My father told Fudge all he had to do was ride it around. Fudge liked that. He zoomed all over the place. Vroom, 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 he called. My father, Mr. Vincent, and Janet sat on folding chairs and watched the action. I sat on the floor at my father's side. Mr. Denberg was the director. He said, okay, Fudge, we're ready to begin now. You ride the toddle bike where I tell you, and I'll take a picture of you doing it, all right? No, Fudge said. What does he mean, Hatcher? Mr. Vincent asked. Why did he say no? My father groaned. Look, George, using Fudge was your idea, not mine. Mr. Denberg tried again. Okay, Fudge, this is it. The cameraman said, start riding this way. Ready, set, go. Fudge sat there on the toddle bike, but he wouldn't pedal. Come on, kid, let's go, the cameraman called. No, don't want to, Fudge answered. What's with this kid, Mr. Hatcher? The cameraman asked. Fudge, my father said, do what the nice man tells you to. No, don't have to. Janet whispered to my father. How about some cookies, Mr. Hatcher? Good idea, Janet, my father told her. I have some Oreos right here, she said, patting her pocketbook. Shall I give them to him? One at a time, my father said. Janet walked across the room to Fudge. He was still sitting on the toddle bike. If you do what the nice man says, you can have a cookie, Janet told him. Show me, Fudge said. Janet held up a box of Oreos. She was really well prepared, I thought. She must eat all day long, what with the cracker shaped like goldfish and a whole box of Oreos, too. I wondered what else she had in that pocketbook. Gimme, Fudge said. Janet held up one cookie. Fudge, re Fudge reached for it, but Janet didn't let him get it. If you do what the nice man says, you can have an Oreo, maybe even two or three Oreos. First cookie, Fudge said. First do what the nice man says, Janet told him. No, first cookie. Give him one, Janet, Mr. Denver called. We haven't got all day to fool around. Janet gave Fudge one Oreo. He ate it up. Okay, kid, all ready now, the cameraman said. You ride over to me. Fudge didn't do it. Mr. Vincent was losing his patience. Hatcher, he hollered, you get that son of yours to ride my toddle bike, or I'm taking my whole account away from you and your agency. Must I remind you, George, using Fudge was your idea, not mine, my father said. 
Forget about whose idea it was, Hatcher. He's your kid. You better get through to him. Now. I have an idea, my father said. He walked to a corner of the room and beckoned to the others. Mr. Denberg and Mr. Vincent gathered around him, along with the cameraman and Janet. They looked like a bunch of football players huddled together talking about the next play. Soon my father called me. Peter, would you join us, please? Sure, Dad, I said. What is it? Peter, we want you to ride the toddle bike for us to show Fudge how it's done. But he already knows how to ride, I said. Didn't you see him zooming around? He won't do it for the cameras, though, my father explained, so we need your help. Will I be in the commercial, too, I asked. Well, the toddle bike is really for very young children, Mr. Denberg said. Otherwise, we'd have you do it in a minute. I got the message. It was like buying the shoes, and like at Dr. Brown's office. They were going to use me to get Fudge to do what they wanted him to. I wondered how anybody would ever manage my brother without my help. I walked over to Fudge and told him I was going to ride the toddle bike. Get off, I said. Fudge held on to the bike. No, mine! It's not yours, my father told him, but Fudge wouldn't move for anything. He closed his eyes and screamed. Can he scream loud when he tries? So my father had to pull him off the toddle bike. Fudge kicked and kept screaming, and I'll bet Mr. Vincent was sorry he ever spotted my brother in the first place. I got on the toddle bike. It was so small, my knees practically touched the ground, but I managed to ride it around just where the cameraman told me to. See how nice Peter can ride the toddle bike, Janet said. Here, Peter, come have an Oreo. You did that so well, you can have two or three if you want. Fudge stopped screaming. Me, he said. What, my father asked him. Me ride, me. You can't ride as well as Peter can, Mr. Denberg said. Can so, Fudge told him. I don't think so, Mr. Denberg said. You already had a turn. You didn't do what I told you to do. Me, do you want, you want to try again, my father asked. Again, Fudge said, again, again, again. Well, I don't know, Mr. Denberg said. Well, Mr. Vincent said, chewing on his cigar. Well, the cameraman, cameraman said, scratching his head. Please, Fudge begged. I never heard my brother say please before. Mr. Denberg said, okay, we'll give you one more chance. Fudge ran to the toddle bike. I got off and he jumped on. Now, he asked Mr. Denberg. Now, Mr. Denberg said, ride this way, Fudge, over here, toward me. Fudge did as he was told. Just like Pita, he said. See, just like Pita. Janet gave me a kiss on my cheek. You saved the day, Peter Hatcher, she said. When she wasn't looking, I wiped off my face. Her kiss was too juicy.